Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. Having looked at some of the basic aspects of resource sharing and consolidation, what I'd like to look at in this section are some of the more practical aspects of how this can all be made to work. Now, before I proceed, I'd like to give you a small word of warning. In my experience, consolidation and resource sharing in Microsoft Project works fine if you follow a very clearly defined set of rules, if you like protocols. And in order for this to be the case, your requirements really must be pretty straightforward. And the situation you're trying to achieve will probably be pretty similar to the situation I'm going to describe in this section. If in fact your requirements are more complex, so for instance, if you have a number of pools or resources, and sometimes you need to get resources from one place and sometimes from another, maybe lots of different projects and programs and consolidations and so on, then Microsoft Project isn't really going to cope with it without you being extremely careful. And even then, you'd be working in an environment where a relatively small slip or deviation from the rules might cause a problem. If your requirements are even a little bit more complicated, then you really need to go for Microsoft Project Server, where you can use what's called ERP, or Enterprise Resource Planning. And the ability to deal with shared resources or resources from multiple sources is supported in a much more comprehensive, flexible and resilient way. So that's just a word of warning. If you're looking at this section and thinking, well, my situation is a lot more complex than that, then you really need to consider whether the project itself is going to be up to the job. Now, the second word of warning is very closely associated with the first one. If you have a situation such as the one I'm going to describe in this section, where you have, say, four project managers sharing a consolidated project and a resource pool, it's very important that they all know what they're doing, because even if one of them doesn't understand how to do this, one person can cause chaos for everybody else. So not only is it important that they all know what they're doing, but it's probably worth making sure that you have some sort of written rules and protocols to cover the situation. Now, having said that, let's take a look at what I consider to be a fairly typical situation. And I've taken the charity event, the six MPP files. There's the All Master Project, the Resources Resource Pool, and the four individual projects. And I've saved them into a cloud location. So that's a shared location where other people can access those files. And in this case, I have my files saved to Microsoft OneDrive. In your particular organization, you may have a network storage area that you might want to save the files to. But in this case, I'm going to be using cloud storage. So let's start with the situation where I know that the project is there and all I want to do is take a look at the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open charity event all and let's just see what happens. Well, first of all, project 2019 realizes that charity event all uses a resource pool and we're given two choices. We can either open the resource pool to see the assignments across all share of files, that is, the files that share the resource pool, or we can say, do not open the other files. Now, the reason we might choose the second option would be, for example, if we weren't really interested in resource usage at that stage and only perhaps wanted to look at some projects, maybe some schedule dates and times, maybe to just run off a report related to tasks with no particular interest in the current state of resourcing. Well, in that case, the second option would be fine because we'd see all of the tasks, but we wouldn't be able to get information about resource assignments and resource usage. On the other hand, if you do want to look at resource usage and assignments and possibly even make some changes to these, then it's necessary to choose the first option. So on this occasion, I'm going to choose the first option. So now I have access to charity event all and within this file, I have the four constituent sub projects that are included within the master project. 
Now, one very important aspect of this is that all five projects, that is the master and the four sub projects and the resource pool are all in the same location. So that's the situation in which I can do this. So let's take that as an ideal situation. I'm working in a shared office, looking at these projects in a shared location. Now, supposing that I was the gala dinner project manager and any particular time I only needed to see the gala dinner project. So let me close this file. And now I'm going to open the gala dinner project from the same shared location. Now, once again, I get the message about opening the resource pool to see assignments across all share of files or of not opening the other files. Note that I also have in the file behind what is in effect dummy or ghost tasks. And these are temporary dummy versions of the tasks to which the tasks in the Gala Dinner project have dependencies, either predecessors or successors. Now, they're not real tasks, but they represent tasks in other sub projects of all. And they are just to give me information about what are to this project external dependencies. Now on this occasion, I'm going to say open the resource pool to see the assignments across all share of files. And I'm going to click OK. Now there is my project. I can work on the Gala Dinner project if I want to. And if I go into the resource pool, I will see the actual shared resource pool and I can use those resources in my project. Now, if in fact I wanted to change the view of the resources, say I wanted to go over to the resource usage view, I could see how those resources are used or I should say where they're used. And in resource usage view, one thing I could do is insert a column to show project. So let's click, scroll down and select project. And let's just widen that column out very slightly. And even though I only have the gala dinner project open, I can still see where the resources are used in relation to other projects. So it's really worth noting that even though I don't have all of those other projects open, the resource pool is aware of where the resources are being used. Now let's look at a very different situation. The Gala Dinner Project Manager has decided to work on the project at home. And from home, he doesn't have access to the shared location. So would the Gala Dinner Project Manager take the resource pool home? Well, in theory, that is possible and provided everything were managed extremely carefully, it could even be made to work. But in my general experience, that is a bit of a recipe for disaster because once the Gala Dinner project manager has made whatever changes they were to make, including potentially changes to the resource pool, if they bring the resource pool back to the shared location on the following day, and the other project managers have done the same, how do you manage to reconcile all of their changes with each other? Now, of course, you may be able to set things up so that they can still access the shared location from home, but I'm going to assume that on this occasion, that's not possible. What is a much better idea is to let the person work on the project at home, but to understand the implications of any changes that are made and be able to incorporate those changes into the shared set of projects. So what we have here is the Gala Dinner project in a location where the resource pool, the shared resource pool, is not visible. So let's see what happens when we open the Gala Dinner project. Now, of course, Project 2019 knows that this project shares a resource pool and has actually tried to find that resource pool. So in this case, we don't say open resource pool to see assignments across all share of files. We just say do not open other files. So it's worth noting that that doesn't mean that this project has fundamentally stopped sharing resources. It just means we're not going to look at them at the moment. 
And what you'll see here is that we get a warning about links that can't be made because this project is no longer in the shared location. So what I'm going to do at the moment is just close and go to the resource sheet and take a look at that. So on the resource sheet, you now have just two resources. And the two resources are the two specific resources that are used in the Gala Dinner Project. So Gala Dinner Project Manager and Volunteer. And what happens in this situation is that Project 2019 creates a sort of temporary working resource sheet and only includes the resources that it knows about, which of course are the resources that are used in this project. It's unaware of the other resources because it can't see the shared resource pool. Now, as far as Project 2019 is concerned, these are at the moment local resources in a local resource sheet. So I could change assignments. So let's jump back to the Gantt chart. And let's look, for instance, at prepare dinner venue. And let's look at the resources. And let's change that from uh, three units to say two and click OK. Now notice the warning just there. Check to see how the current assignments are adjusted to accommodate the change of units. So if I click to get my options and I'm going to select the third option, change the amount of work, but keep the duration the same. And that's now fine. And then the other thing we might want to say is, could I actually assign an additional resource here? So let's suppose that what I wanted to do was to assign the volunteer that I've just freed up to make bar arrangements. So let's do that. I'm going to double click. I'm going to select volunteer, one unit, and click on OK. And you can see I now have one volunteer assigned to task A to make bar arrangements. But what about assigning a resource that we can't currently see? Supposing we're going to assign somebody to help with training the gala dinner volunteers. So let me go to the resource sheet. And I'm going to add a resource and that resource is going to be caterer. And then I'm going to assign that person. So there are the changes that I'm going to make to the gala dinner project. So having finished work for the evening, I'm going to close this down and I'm going to bring it back to the shared location and replace the gala dinner project in the shared location. So let's see what the consequences of that are. So it's the next day and I've replaced the gala dinner project in the shared location and I've opened up the charity event project file. So let me scroll down to gala dinner and let's look at our changes. So first of all, prepare dinner venue. Let's double click. And I can see that I have two volunteers. And let's just check another one. So let's go into make bar arrangements. And I have one volunteer assigned to that. And if we look at the final change that we made, we'll double click on train gala dinner volunteers. And you can see that we have the caterer assigned to that task. And if you look now at the resource sheet, of course, now we're looking at the shared resource pool and we have a ninth resource that's been added in there, caterer. So that was a local resource for the Gala Dinner project and now it's been added into our shared resource pool. Now, there's absolutely no problem with this person now being added to our resource pool, but it's important to understand that if in fact the assignment we wanted to make was one of the existing resources, we may have to do a resource replacement. On this occasion, we didn't already have Caterer set up, but Caterer is now part of our resource pool. 
So you can see that all of those changes that we have made to the Gala Dinner project without the shared resource pool being available on this occasion have worked out absolutely fine. So that's it from this section. We're going to look at resource sharing and consolidating some more in the next one. So I'll see you then.